Hey guys, it's Chill here. Welcome back to C++ multi-threading. In the last video, we created our uh, thread pool and we're running our tasks on it and everything is nice, but there's a lot to be added. This is very bare bones. Uh, so one very important thing is we want the ability to wait on a specific task. If we're queuing up, you know, like tens or hundreds of tasks in here, we don't want to have to wait for them all to be done just to get the result of a specific one. Uh, so that's one major thing that we're lacking here. But in the bigger picture, as we work with tasks and using the results of tasks in other processing, we would like the ability to uh, get return values from our tasks. So right now, our task functions, they all have to be functions that take no parameters and don't return a value. So they just do processing with side effects. And if we wanted to get a, a value out of our task, we would have to create some kind of, you know, shared memory and then capture a reference to that shared memory in our task, set it, and then we would access the shared memory from outside the task. And we'd have to make sure that we don't access that memory until the task was completed. We'd also have to manage the lifetime of this shared memory so that it's always available from both the task thread the worker and from the caller. Uh, so we would probably have to be, you know, put on the heap to make sure it doesn't die if something goes out of scope. And that's just a lot of work. And we don't want to do that. We'd, we'd like to have that abstracted away from us so that we can focus on doing actual work instead of managing all these annoying details. And if we do that properly, then we reduce the possibility of making mistakes every time we have to manage those details and introducing bugs into our program. So that's what this video is all about. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to move uh, the style from a style of, you know, setting some kind of shared memory and accessing it procedurally from both ends uh, to a functional style where our tasks will return values and then those values will be available from the caller to access asynchronously. You know, if we had normal function calls, we could just call function f, g, h, and then do some operation, some processing that requires the results of all of those three calls. And we want this pretty much exact same syntax only for asynchronous. So if I call f, g, h, these three will all start working simultaneously, concurrently, and then I can join all the results and use them to, in some other processing. That's what we're going to build. It's going to take a couple videos, but let's get started. So the basic architecture of this is we're going to have something called a promise. And a promise is going to hold a reference to a shared state. And from a promise, you will be able to derive something called a future. And the future will also hold a reference to the shared state. The promise is where the worker is going to set the value and then the future is where the caller gets the value so these are two ends you push from this end you pull from this end and this makes sure that you don't have two ends trying to write to the same memory and this is going to enable us to synchronize the oper operation so when the worker sets the promise that will allow a signal to propagate to the caller who can then get they can wait on this if they want to but they don't have to wait on it and both ends of these are going to be referencing some shared state that is going to hold the value that is returned by whatever task that we are doing so this is a very broad idea of what we're going to create instead of blah blah blahing to get into the details let's just make the damn thing so we are going we don't need this code for right now so we're just going to comment this out uh, so, what do we need? Well, the first thing we're going to need is some shared state. Now, the state is templated on type T. That is going to be the type of the return value for this operation. Uh, now, we need two functions. We need a function to set that value, and we need a function to get that value. So, we're going to make the, the set function templated so that you don't have to pass in by value or by reference, we can just forward whatever is passed in. And the get function is going to return by value, the set value. We'll just call this one get. The first thing we need is we need a way of storing the value. Uh, now we're going to include optional for this. 
because originally the value isn't set. And depending on t, there might not even be a default constructor for it. So we can't just set, you can't just have a default constructed one and then assign to it later. So we actually have to, we can use optional here. We could also use like a pointer, but optional is just, you don't have to allocate on the heap then. So we'll do std optional t, and this will be the result of our asynchronous operation. Now, the other thing is that for this shared state, you've got the promise, which is going to set, and then you've got the future, which is going to get. And the future wants to be able to synchronize to the promise. So we want the, uh, the caller to be able to wait on this value and be awakened when the value arrives. So we could do this a number of ways. We could use a condition variable. That's probably the, uh, the simplest go-to. But we don't actually need a condition variable, do we? Um, because it'll only be written to once by the worker and then read once by the caller. You could get away with just a mutex, right? You would just, the, the worker would hold the mutex until the result was finished and then it would release the mutex at which point the caller, if it was waiting on that mutex, could just wake up and get it. But here's the thing. When we create the shared state, we might create it on a different thread than the thread that's doing the task. In fact, that's the most common scenario. The shared state will be created when you create the task, but that cast will be transferred to a worker thread. Uh, and if you, if you acquire a mutex on thread A, you must release it on thread A. So we can't actually use mutex like that. Now, here's the thing. There's something that we can use, and it's actually more efficient than using like a condition variable. So there's a thing here that was added in C++20 called a semaphore, and it's a lightweight synchronization primitive. Uh, it can be more efficient than a condition variable. And unlike std mutex, a counting semaphore is not tied to threads of execution. So we can acquire on one thread and release on another, which is exactly what we want. Uh, now, a semaphore can represent, you know, like you have n resources, and so it can be acquired n times before it blocks, and then when more resources become available, you can release them. Um, a binary semaphore is just saying, this accounting semaphore, there's only one resource, basically, is what that's saying, which is what we have right here, because we only have basically one signal that we're trying to send between the promise and the future. So we use a binary semaphore to signal from promise to future that the value has become available. So we include semaphore and then we go std binary semaphore and that's our ready signal. So now, what do we do when we set? Uh, well, we're gonna do a little test here. We're only gonna allow you to set once. So if you set multiple times, well, we're just gonna ignore it, but you might also wanna like print an, an error or throw an exception or something, I don't know. We'll just say if something has not already been set in the optional, then we will set the res well actually but we're going to std forward r the result we're going to forward that into our optional and we're also going to do our ready signal so we're going to release now ready signal we want to initially construct it with a count of zero, meaning there are no resources available. So if someone tries to acquire the, sig the, the semaphore, they will block until we release it, until something has been set. All right, so in the get, now we do the other side of that, which is ready signal dot acquire. This will block unless the value has already been set. And then we return std move the result out. All right, now we create the promise type template and on T, which is the, again, the return value of the task. It's got a set, which is just gonna forward to the shared state set. So the promise has to hold a reference to the shared state. We wanna create that on the heap so that it is independent of any scope. And we're gonna share it between the promise and the future. So we should create a shared pointer to shared state of T. Makes sense, right? And then in set result, all we're gonna do is we're gonna forward this value to our shared state. 
like this. Now, when you create a promise, we have to initially create the shared state. We can do that just with a default constructed and with make shared. And there you go, you have the bare bones of your promise. Now, one important part of a promise is that you can get a future from that. The future is to be used in the other end of the transaction, the receiving end. So we should create a class future. I'm gonna forward declare promise here just for fun. And then we need our future. So our future is also going to, you know, have a handle on the shared state. And when you create a future, it's going to get a shared pointer to that state and just set it. And I'm making this private because the only thing that I want to be able to create a future is a promise. So that's why I make promise a friend. Promise of T is a friend of future of T. And it is the only thing that will be able to access this constructor and construct a future. Now, the thing that you do from the future is you actually get the value. Uh, now, the way we're gonna work this is you can only get the value once. Also, a future should only be accessed from a single thread, same as a promise. So, um, what we would like to do here, maybe, is just put a little bool, result acquired is equal to false. So we're gonna have a little flag here saying whether we've already gotten the result from this future. And we're just gonna do a little assert here. So we're gonna make sure that we haven't yet gotten the result. And assuming that is true, then we should set that flag because now we are acquiring it. So result acquired is equal to true. And then we should return p state pointer to get. Yeah, we have a get function, it returns a type t, exactly what we want. All right, now that we've defined our future, we can go back down to our promise and we can define the part of the promise that gets the future. So here in promise, we create this function here. One way to think of a future, it's like a ticket. It's like a ticket that you can break off from this um, transaction that you're creating and you hold on to that ticket and you can redeem it sometime in the future for the value that doesn't exist right now. So this function is breaking off that ticket and so you can hold on to it and use it sometime later. So what are we going to do? Well, similar to future uh, that can only get the result once, a promise can only emit one future. You can't emit multiple tickets, only one ticket for one person to redeem. So let's put a bool future available and we'll set that to true. And so initially future is available and we got to assert that when you try to get the future that is actually available. And if it is available, then we say, okay, it's no longer available. And then we return a future that is constructed from the shared pointer p state. There. All right, so now we can set the value, we can get the future. And that is the basics of the promise future system. We got it all laid out here. I think this works unless I've missed something. Uh, the binary semaphore will allow the holder of the future to synchronize with whoever is holding the promise. So let's show what this works. This isn't the full system, by the way. We still got stuff to make, but let's just show how this part of it works in a little demonstration. So generally the way the task will work like this is you're going to go TK promise. We're going to make a promise for an integer. Call that prom. Now we've got to get a future out of that promise. We break off the ticket. Now we have those two ends of the transaction. So we're going to execute a function, a std thread. The function is going to take in promise int. We'll say p for that. We'll just simulate some kind of asynchronous operation with uh, sleeping for 2.5 seconds, and then when we're done the operation, we set the result to the value. So our function for our thread takes in a promise, so we should std move the promise into the thread. And we'll just detach this thread, we'll let it run on its own. 
I'm not going to block on it, going to join or heaven forbid, destroy everything when we destroy it. Uh, and then, so the promise has been transferred to some worker thread who is going to set the value. Now the original calling thread should wait for that value. They could do some other work um, while this worker is happening, but once it needs the value, then it should just call future.get to get the value. And if the value does not exist yet, it will block until the value is available and then it will be able to use it. And there you go, there's the basic idea of how the promise future dynamic works. Promise goes into a worker just who sets the value and the caller holds the future and uses it to do the get. And we don't have assert because I didn't include it. And there you go, 69. Let's run it one more time without the build. After 2.5 seconds, we get our result of 69 and everyone is happy. So here, yeah, we've done it. We are able now to orchestrate the transfer of some result from a task to the person who created the task. And it does this without us having to manually manage that shared memory and manually synchronize it. Uh, we have this nice little utility that we can use that uh, does all that for us automatically. And in the future, get it in the future, in the future, we are going to build on this utility. I mean, specifically, I don't want to have to create threads manually. I want to have some kind of function that launches them automatically. And I want my actual worker task function to be a function that returns a value and that should automatically create a promise or, you know, a future of that value. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. This is still clunky, but it's the beginning of something beautiful. Trust me. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some C++ multi-threading.